Hi everyone, how's it going? So today I wanted to make a video on a topic that gets overlooked most of the time when you're making disaster preparations and it has to do with communications. Uh, we rely heavily on our cell phones, um, computers and things like that for communication but in the event of a uh, shit hit the fan scenario, earthquake, you know, um, any type of hurricane or, or civil unrest, um, any type of of a disaster or a event that's going to cause us to lose our communications. You know, what's a backup plan? We make uh, preparations for food, water, guns, ammo, first aid, even a generator power to keep your fridge and lighting going. But we leave out a critical component, and that's communications. So, you know, of course, this isn't going to replace your cell phone for long-range communications, but in a pinch, um, it allows you to stay connected with your family and other like-minded people or preppers in the area, or even law enforcement and EMS um, if necessary. Um, you know, you can use it um, at your house, and keep in touch, you know, with your family members. Um, if you have to go mobile and you're in a vehicle, um, allows you to communicate vehicle to vehicle. Um, and, you know, again, if it's any other type of, of disaster scenario or civil unrest, you've got comms to your family. So. Again, I live in California, so I'm more concerned about, um, you know, earthquake um, that disrupts all the services, including communication. So a way to communicate with my family to make sure uh, my house is secure. Um, and, and again, just so that I can, you know, keep in constant contact uh, with my family. Um, longer term, of course, you can uh, use these devices um, put together a repeater if you had to to talk to other people um, me not be geographically located next to you um, uh, like ham operators and such but today I don't want to focus so much as on the capability of these radios um, because they're very capable of, uh, of uh, you know, reaching all the different uh, ham frequencies mostly today I want to just talk about how you would use them um, simplex we'll call it just from radio to radio um, invent your, you know, you want to communicate uh, with your family or again, like-minded people. Um, so we'll try not to do too deep of a dive into um, what they're capable of doing. Uh, we'll just briefly touch on that. So by no means is this a tutorial on on ham operating uh, these type of radios. Um, I'm not a ham operator myself. I'm a I'm a technical person. And I have RF knowledge and radio knowledge and things like that. So again, for me, um, this isn't going to go into getting your um, you know, technical uh, ham license that allows you to get access to greater amounts of spectrum and talk, you know, great distances, you know, throughout the United States and all over the world. This is mostly just going to be a little bit focused on these radios and how you can use them for a shit hit the fan scenario. So anyway, um, keep in mind, this is not encrypted communications. It's amateur band communications. So anyone else can hear you um, that have these radios. And we reference the ones, the small little FRS Motorola radios you can get from Walmart or Home Depot um, or such. Um, similar band, um, so be aware that anybody can hear you. You can take steps so that you cannot hear them by use of what's called a PL tone or a DCS. But remember, um, this is the amateur band and they will, will be able to hear you. So it's not a secure channel. So. Uh, these little radios, uh, Chinese made, this happens to be made by Anytone. Um, this model is an NSTIG-8R. Um, there's other radios out there made by uh, other ch uh, Chinese companies like Baofeng. Um, a little bit less expensive than this. I, I went with these radios because the manual itself um, is US written. So it's a little bit easier to understand um, and operate. Uh, this kit is what comes with the basic radio kit. Um, it comes with the uh, transceiver um, with a cradle, charger, and a wall wart, um, a small lower gain, a hard plastic ducky antenna, a manual, and a earpiece um, that uh, allows you to plug it in your ear um, and listen. Um, I don't think this actually has a speaker. This is just for listening. Um, I have two of these radios right now. My intent is to purchase four of these radios, one for each member of my family. Um, accessories that I bought were a little bit higher gain antenna, um, a mag mount that can mount on top of my vehicle 
and the antenna uh, that will go on the radio can just go on top of the mag mount. Um, so you don't need, you know, you could get a larger antenna if you want for more gain, but vehicle to vehicle, if you're on the move. Um, I purchased a um, lapel mount uh, microphone um, so I can mount it on my shoulder um, with my loadout kit. Um, a programming cable so you can program it all on your computer, uh, frequencies and such. And then I, I purchased a, um, an earpiece um, and that actually ties right into the microphone. So um, you, know, you can you plug this earpiece into your ear over your shoulder and plug it you know, directly into the microphone so you can use it hands free or you can uh, um, listen to it in your ear and then communicate by, uh, by the push button on the microphone. So frequency range. So again, not getting too technical on this in the frequency range. Um, these are dual band radios. They do both VHF and UHF. VHF from uh, 136 to say 174 megahertz. Uh, UHF uh, 400 to 520 megahertz. And they're also capable of receiving in the FM broadcast range 68 to 108 megahertz. So um, in the event you get some uh, um, FM radio back, then you, uh, you can listen to those FM radio broadcasts. They have the ability to store 200 channels you can program. And then they'll operate also in a um, low power one watt or to a high power five watt um, range. Um, so again, um, you know, range, you know, could be a mile to several miles depending on the terrain. Clearly, if these two radios are up on the top of a building or on top of a mountain, um, you can get, you know, quite a bit of range. I mean, it could be, you know, greater than 20 miles. But generally speaking, simplex radio to radio, you know, um, probably under a mile um, depending on the urban environment you're in. So again, mostly to be used um, short range. Um, we did talk briefly about you can uh, eventually, depending on the, the frequency band you're in and you, the licensing, you can incorporate a repeater so you can uh, repeat from radio to radio. Um, but again, that's you know, a little bit more outside of what um, my thoughts were on this video. So what can you do without an FCC license? So um, in the band they call FRS, so the Family Radio Service, um, there are 14 channels available. Um, they're license exempt, basically from 462.5625 to 467.7125. So those uh, 14 channels you're allowed to operate just like you would on the Home Depot or, or you know, Walmart style of Motorola radio you buy. Um, those are ex very low power. These are much more powerful RFYs than those little radios. And again, have more uh, capability to get into different bands. Um, I'm gonna, I'll post in the link after this uh, links to the products and links to the FCC site that shows you where these uh, frequencies exist and gives you more detail on this frequency. So um, that's the FRS band that, you know, use it for out, you know, hunting or backing your boat down the ramp or talking to your, to your wife when you're walking around the flea market, whatever. That's the FRS band. Um, again, 14 channels in that band. Now the MERS, or MURS, which is a multi-radio service area, um, there's, this is VHF, so there's three frequencies that are license exempt in the, say, 151.8 to 151.94 band, and two more frequencies in 154.57 and 152.154.6, which the last two are typically uh, business use. So again, there's a couple in the VHF. The, the band I talked about earlier, the FRS, is in the UHF band. Um, what can you do with, with a no-test type of FCC license? So there's another part of the band in there in UHF called um, uh, GMRS, or General Mob Mobile Radio Service, GMRS. There's 22 frequencies uh, in the 462.5625 to 467.7250. Those interlace with the FRS. So even though you're in the FRS band, it's you know possible for you to get on these frequencies. It's you know it would be illegal if you don't have a license. Um, so those 22 channels you can get. Um, it's about $85, and it's a it's good for five years as the license to operate in those uh, frequencies. 
So not a ton of them in there, um, but um, you know enough frequencies that you can talk simplex within close range. Um, <clears throat> and quite frankly, have decent comms to your family. So what can you do if shit hits the fan? We'll say so. You know the ham operators they operate in quite a few pockets of spectrum. You know all over the place. We're just going to touch on a couple um, that they have <clears throat> in the license spectrum. What they call a two meter band. VHF, which is say 146 to 147 megahertz. They also use spectrum in the 70 centimeter band, which is you know 400 to 450 megahertz, um, and it differs depending on where you're at in the country. You know 420, 430 to 440 to 450. So <clears throat> anyway, they're right in the same bands. Um, they just operate in, in spectrum that uh, license spectrum that they're authorized to to operate in. Um, now, the ham operators per se are, are very protective over these bands, so I wouldn't ever recommend transmitting in these bands unless it's, unless it's life-threatening, emergency, and you really need help. Because the FCC will make an exception if you use these frequencies, you know, sort of a get out of jail free card, but it, but it has to be a life or death situation where you, um, you have no choice and, you know, you'll be able to use those, those parts of the frequencies. Um, you can turn these up and you can listen to people talk on those frequencies. Um, you know, if they're transmitting on a, we have a lot of gain and a big antenna and you can hear them from you know, all over the country. Um, typically with this small antennas, you're not gonna get too far, but um, you better hear some of that chatter. Um, it used to be in the F, uh, it used to be that you had to have no Morse code to get even a, the lowest level version, but now it's no code. You get a technical license you know, you may take a month to study for that because um, it is very technical. And then it opens up a whole new world to you talking to uh, amateur radio people, you know, all within your area and over the globe. And what's, that's the intent of amateur radio and ham is to be able to have communications during times of disaster when other means of typical, you know, consumer uh, communications um, is no longer available. So the amateur band allows these people through a network of repeaters um, to communicate. So um, it's very interesting um, to be able to talk to people, you know, uh, all over the world, you know, you, you, you know, with ham radio. But again, you can start off with a, a no-code technical license. It does take a bit to get. It's not impossible for the average person to get. <clears throat> it just takes a little bit uh, more study to, to get that. And then lastly, um, you can. It is possible. Uh, to contact law enforcement and EMS, and um, they use spectrum in this these area these up these radios operate in, it. so it's not impossible to even you know listen or even transmit to them. But again, um, it be it better be life threatening, um, or you know you can be fined and arrested and ticketed whatever for operating in the band um, that you're not supposed to be in. So again, I don't um, advocate that you know unless you were lost somewhere and it's life threatening. And you need to do something like that. So, anyway, again, we'll just brief, briefly go over some, you know, these radios and these accessories. Um, like I said, this is an uh, AnyTone um, radio, and um, this model is uh, NSTIG-8R. They make several versions of this. Um, I went with this one um, because it seems pretty well made uh, for a Chinese product. Um, I picked this up. Uh, oh, again, it does cover the FRS, GMRS, MURS, and the ham bands, and as well as FM receive. Um, these radios are about $59 on Amazon. There's a Baofeng version of that radio out there uh, that is about, say, half that price. Um, the feedback is that the manual is not intuitive, it's not US written. So, uh, and I like that I, I was able to get some US support here. Um, for these radios if necessary. So um, for the amount of money we spent prepping, I didn't think it was too much to spend, say $58 for a radio um, that's gonna last me a while, decent quality. It has a few more features and capability and ease of use over the less expensive um, version. So again, about $58 and change um, uh, on Amazon um, to, for this, uh, these radios. Um, again, again, it will, you know, they'll, they'll cover the, uh, the bands that I, we spoke about, um, a while ago. Um, let's see, moving on. Um, programming cable over here, 
$21 from Amazon. Um, the shoulder mic and speaker, uh, $22 from Amazon. Um, high gain antenna was about $15 on Amazon. Uh, the whole earpiece, uh, about $13. A magnetic mount with a six foot cable uh, was in the $20 range. Um, and uh, the only thing I don't have that I want to get would be a spare battery and a cigarette lighter adapter. Um, those are probably the only things I really need now. So anyway, um, much more capabilities radios than we'll discuss today. Um, but for family communications, um, I would uh, I'd recommend something like this um, if you're prepping to be able to communicate with your family. Um, and that's really about it. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, leave me a comment and a like. And I look forward to bringing you another video soon. Thanks again.